Hey guys, welcome to Pediatric Physical Examination Part 2. In my today's lesson, I am going to discuss about head, eyes, nose and the throat examination in children. To examine the ears, throat and the mouth, the parent should restrain the child in a sitting position. Uh, this examination should preferably be done at the end of the rest of the physical examination. Uh, to start from head, uh, when we examine the head of the children, examine the size and the shape of the head. The size of the head is measured as uh, described above. However, grossly one can be seen uh, microcephaly or uh, big microcephaly. Uh, if the head is big, transillumination should be done in a dark room. Uh, because we have uh, discussed about uh, measuring the size of the head on the physical examination part one by head circumference, uh, but grossly without measuring the circumference of the head, uh, we can say small head or uh, big head microcephaly or microcephaly uh, without measuring it and if the head is big transillumination should be done in a dark room uh, there are different shapes of the head uh, for example frontal bossing which is a protuberant enlargement of the frontal bones uh, or caput caruratum which is a box shaped head uh, can be seen in a child uh, both of the above deformation both frontal bossing and the caput caruratum is a uh, common deformation uh, in our setup because of the uh, rickettes. Rickettes cause frontal bossing and the caput caruratum in the uh, in children. So even examining the shape of the children, uh, the shape of the head of the children will give us a clue to the diagnosis uh, of the rickettes. Uh, then uh, size and the character of fontanel should be seen. Uh, note the size and the character of fontanel and only an anterior fontanel should remain open after uh, two weeks and the anterior fontanel measures two by four centimeters for the first few months and it should be just the size of the fingertip at one year uh, the anterior fontanel closes between uh, 10 to 18 months of age and open fontanel after 18 months uh, could be due to increased intracranial pressure or it might be due to rickettes uh, or hypothyroidism osteogenous imperfecta or subdural hematoma can cause uh, open fontanel up to uh, more than 18 months of age so uh, checking the size and the character of the fontanel is uh, important and also uh, check for the possibility of early closure of the suture lines uh, the cranial sutures are open during a newborn period uh, but should be closed thereafter at times there could be an early closure of the suture where the suture lines feel hard and raised uh, that's called craniosynostosis uh, to differentiate craniosynostosis from molding, in molding uh, we can uh, separate by pushing the overlapped bones, whereas in craniosynostosis that is not uh, possible. And also, uh, feel for craniotapes, which is a feel, uh, feel of indentation when a table tennis ball is pre uh, pressed with fingers, and it is found by pressing filmry in the temporoparietal or parietospital areas of the scalp, and it indicates softening of the skull. So, if there is a craniotapes, that, that means indentation uh, when we press the, the bones around temporal parietal or uh, perito hospital area uh, it might show the disorder like rickettes hyrocephalus syphilis osteogenes imperfecta and the premature uh, infants and also palpate the skull carefully for areas of tenderness and there might be areas with defect in the skull uh, as in the in the case of uh, encephalocele uh, when we see the uh, eyes uh, Examination, uh, examining the uh, position of the eyes, lids, conjunctiva, cornea, and the pupil is important. Uh, look for vision, microptalamus, exoptalamus, strabismus, nystagmus, xerosis, keratitis, biotic spots, atosis, setting sun appearance, ectopia lens of Marfan syndrome, and the cataracts, which might be due to congenital rubella syndrome. They can all seen be on the examination of the eyes. And due to the thinning of the sclera, the eyes might appear blue in children with osteogenesis imperfecta and endless dull syndrome. So if the, uh, a child has a blue eye, we might have some differential diagnosis even by, by inspecting the eye. The, uh, it can occur in case of osteogenesis imperfecta and endless dull syndrome and also other disorders. That is due to a thinning of sclera, uh, it causes blue, blue appearance of the uh, eye. And examine for interpupillary distance. Uh, normally, the interpupillary distances uh, range from 3.5 to 5.5 cm. But if there is uh, interpupillary distance greater than 5.5 cm, we call it hypertelorism. That is a wider interpupillary distance uh, due to enlargement of the laser wing of sphenoid bone. 
and it might be associated with midfascial anomalies and also uh, mental retardation. Uh, the other thing is uh, we should have to also examine the conjunctiva, whether it is pink, pale, or whether it is any signs of uh, discharge. And also, as we have said, we should have to examine the cornea and the pupils. Uh, pupillary size is also important. Example, in, in comatose child, we can see different uh, pupillary sizes and we can uh, put our differential diagnosis by even examining the size of the pupils. Uh, the other is uh, examination of the uh, ears. Examine the shape, size, and the position of the ear. Uh, ears are low seat when the tragus of the ear is below the level of the outer canthus of the eye. And look for discharges from the ears such as uh, pus or bread and feel for swelling and tenderness of the mastoid process by palpating uh, behind the ears. So if the ear is normal, we can say uh, no abnormal size, shape uh, uh, and the position of the ear. We can say no visible ear discharge and also we should have to check tragus and the mastoid tenderness and if there is, it is normal, we can say no tragus or mastoid tenderness. And uh, the next one is examination of the uh, otoscopy. Uh, look for tympanic membrane light reflex, uh, check for hyperemia, check for bulging and also check for perforation. Uh, a bulging blue red uh, tympanic membrane may suggest basal skull fracture due to accumulation of blood in the middle ear. So after examining the shape of the ear, the size, the position, any discharge from the ear, and, uh, and also any tenderness of tragus and mastoid, we should have to uh, complete our ear examination by doing uh, otoscope. The next one is examination of the nose. Uh, examine for shape, patency, uh, discharge, uh, nasal symptom and uh, whether it's deviated uh, or whether it is normal uh, and also press over the maxillary sinus and the, the frontal sinuses uh, to check for tenderness of the uh, sinuses uh, normally the etmoidal, sphenoidal and the maxillary sinus are present at birth but the etmoidal sinus does not develop until four to six years of age so if our examination of the uh, nose is normal we can say uh, intact nasal septum if uh, midline and also if there is no discharge or no polyp, uh, no visible nasal polyp or no visible discharge. Uh, and also we should have to uh, feel for any tenderness over the frontal sinus or maxillary sinus. And if it is normal, we can say no tenderness over uh, maxillary and uh, uh, frontal sinus. The next part of uh, HEENT examination is uh, mouse. Uh, on the mouse, we can check for lip color for lip color for example you can see cyanosis or pallor we can check for presence of cleft palate any crack, uh, cracked lips any ulceration and also should have to check a tongue for protrusion of tongue division of tongue color papillary atrophy any trash any oral trash any dryness and also you should have to check mucous membrane for uh, any uh, coplic spot and also you should have to check at least for any caries any gamma hypertrophy or uh, any number of teeth uh, that is present and also uh, we should have to count the number of teeth uh, that that is there and milk teeth are started to erupt at around six months of age and the eruption of 20 milk teeth is uh, usually expected to complete at two to three years of age and the permanent teeth eruption starts around six to seven years and uh, delayed dentition may occur in rickettis cretinism and the down syndrome so we say delayed uh, teeth eruption if there is no entities up to the age of 13 months. So up to 13 months, uh, there is a possibility that uh, there, there might not be to the eruption, but the normal expected time is six months of age. So we define de delayed to the eruption if, it is, uh, if there is no teeth at the age of 13 months. So if there is delayed dentition, we might consider the cause as rickettis, cretinism, or Down syndrome, or any other thing. And also we should have to check the color of the teeth. Uh, the color of the teeth may become brownish due to fluorescence, which is common dental problems in, in uh, our country, especially in the Rift Valley areas. But nowadays it is uh, it is corrected. And also, uh, tetracycline is now rarely used, and it also causes dental discoloration when it's used in children under seven years of age. And also, in addition to lip, uh, tongue, and the teeth, uh, in the mouth we should have to check for pharynx. And uh, if there is a pre a peremia, swelling of tonsils, and if there is any exudate on the tonsils, uh, we should have to check it. So if every, everything is normal on, in the mouth, we can say no cleft lip, cleft palate, uh, 
with the pink tang and the bucal mucosa, uh, no dental caries, no gamma hypertrophy, pharnax is normal, and the like. So we should have to check lip, tongue, teeth, and the pharnax in the mouth. Uh, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe for the next uh, on the next lesson. We will talk about the respiratory system physical examination and the others.